Hey, what's going on guys? Andy Pride here, back with Milk and Cookies Total War. And today, I am bringing you the second of the replays I played with YHK Chang. Another classic battle. This time, I'm bringing the Eco Iki, who have some very distinctive army setups and a different style than the other traditional Sengoku Jedi, or let me rephrase that, Sengoku Jedi period factions. The Eco Iki, obviously monk-based, Ashigaru-based, and for cavalry, they only have Naginata Warrior Monk cavalry, so you cannot bring Great Guard, you cannot bring Yari Kev, you cannot bring Light Kev, only Naginata War Warrior Monk Kev. Very good unit, but especially in classic battles, but it does limit you a little bit because you cannot compete necessarily with like the Great Guard that other Japanese factions can bring. The Yari Ashigaru have different stats, they actually have higher base morale, but lower attack and defense stats so one thing if you guys if any of you watched fishy's classic battle tournament uh, a couple months well i don't know like half a year ago one of the metas in that tournament the meta game was bringing highly vetted yari ashigaru and basically the veteran system in classic battle works that when you give chevrons to a vanilla unit the chevron cost is a percentage of the base cost of the vanilla unit, meaning that lower cost units are more effectively upgraded by chevrons. You never want to give like a chevron to a hero unit because that chevron costs more and the stat increase is the same as it would be for like a Yari Ashigaru. So highly vetting Yari Ashigaru in classic mode can be a very good strategy because they are the upgrade is cheap basically and it's really cost efficient. So one of the things I did in this battle was I brought, I think I brought four or five Yara Ashigaru with five or six chevrons. And this basically means that in Spearwall, they'll be able to take on and sometimes even beat katanas or nodachis. And so, especially with the increased morale from being the Ikoiki faction, that can be very, very beneficial. This battle was fought on Yamasaki Choke Point. Pretty interesting map. I actually like it a lot. Some people don't. Some people think it's a camping map, namely Madness. Madness does not like this map at all. But I think it can be really interesting because there's just so much terrain to think about. There's the choke points in the middle. There's the, cl the cliffs on the sides that you can't go through. You have to go around if you want to get up, and you might have to attack uphill. I think it's just a very interesting map. Uh, my opponent, obviously, like I already said, YHK Chang, bringing Match Like Ashigaru, Yari Ashigaru, Bow Warrior Monk, couple of Nodachis, Naginata Warrior Monks, and Great Guard, and some Yari Cav as well. For my army setup, I have the Yari Ashigaru upgraded, a one Bow Warrior Monk, and a couple Mashlock Warrior Monks, which I forgot to mention. Those are another benefit of being, being the eco Iki faction. No other unit in the game has access to these in Classic Mode, and you can bring more than one. It's not like Avatar Conquest Mode where you can only bring one Mashlock Warrior Monk. I believe I have two or three Actually, I think I have three. So, yeah. And with the nine, nine uh, warrior monk have, that rounds out my army setup. And I think I have a monk hero hidden in there somewhere as well. But let's press play right now and get into this. Now, this army setup is not going to be one where I'm just going to blindly rush. Obviously, it's very skirmish heavy. couple match lock units and a bow warrior monk. I'm going to need to do as much skirmishing as possible. And I think it's actually a pretty decent counter to what my opponent brought. He has one bow warrior monk and a couple matchlocks, but I definitely outrange him and have a better ranged core. So I was initially thinking about going up to take this sword dojo, but then I noticed that he was lining up to take the shrine in the middle. So I'm just going to send one matchlock detachment to capture the shrine, or no, the sword dojo up on the cliff, and then reposition all my units to the middle right here and kind of set up at this choke point overlooking the shrine and what I did not want to have happen is let him capture that sword dojo or the wow I keep mixing them up the shrine is in the middle of the map I did not want him to capture that without a fight so as quickly as I possibly can I'm gonna move up my units and kind of get a half moon circle going around his army formation and when he set up when he sets up to take the shrine I'm gonna move my bow warrior monk up and hopefully try to win a skirmish battle with his. If I can get that bow off the field, I'll have the total ranged advantage and maybe be able to do a lot of damage to him. But YHK Chang is going to get very aggressive with his cavalry, send a great guard, and I have one Naginata Warrior Monk cavalry hidden in the woods over there. 
and I quickly send the rest of my cavalry over to reinforce as well. I believe we get an engagement pretty... Oh, no. No, not yet. I guess it's a little bit later in the battle. But looking at the cavalry on the map, he definitely has a cavalry advantage. He has two Great Guard and three Yari Cav in the back. I think it was actually a mistake for him to leave his Yari Cav in the back there. I'm not sure why he did that. I think if he had kept all of his cavalry together, he would have been able to complete, completely overwhelm me in any cab fight, and it was just would have been one that I would have never taken. And uh, I would have, I'm going to be very defensive with my cavalry this battle if I can. But I think he would have been very well served by just... I mean, he should know that with all the spear cavalry, he has the cavalry advantage. So pushing that cab advantage early in the fight would have been a pretty good idea. He is going to get the farmhouse that'll give his men... Uh, movement speed and that'll make it harder for me to kite so I, I kind of had to concede that building but I didn't really want to because I knew that at least kind of kiting my army would be the most effective strategy getting some multiple volleys off of my match locks moving on my bow warrior monk in the middle now and I believe I'm going to start taking some shots yeah they're getting some volleys off now and looking at the stats on the Bow Warrior Monks, I actually think they are the exact same for both factions. No, actually, that's interesting. Iko Iki Bow Warrior Monks have better stats by five. They have five better reload skill than any other faction, and they have five better accuracy. I did not know that. So, And my guys are in a better formation at the moment. They're more spread out in loose formation, so they're going to take less casualties. But he was smart to turn on fire attack. It's going to deal more damage to my bow. And he can... I don't like his formation right now, but somehow, even though he was super grouped up like that, he didn't lose very many men. I'm not sure if the shrine blocked some of the arrows, but I'm not really sure. On my right flank, I just got a shot off with my Matchlock Warrior Monk. And they do outrange those Matchlock Ashigaru, but he got a downhill charge on my Naginata Warrior Monk Cavalry with Great Guard. And that's not a good thing, but... Again, he only has one great guard over that over there, and I think if he had brought all of his cavalry over, he would have been able to wipe off, wipe out all of my cavalry and just gotten me off the field. He does not do that though. He's sending a Naginata warrior monk to reinforce, and I am surrounding him with my warrior monk cav, and should be able to win that fight. But definitely gonna take a lot of losses. Little bit of a micro mistake here. He runs his matchlock Ashigaru way too too far forward. And I'm going to spear wall with my Yari Ashigaru and be able to clean up this little segment right here. Getting some nice close up volleys with my Iko Iki monks. Oh, yeah, just took out about 20 men in that volley and haven't taken too many losses myself. And actually, he does chase off my cavalry. He does win that fight. Naginata Warrior Monk Cavalry reinforcing cleans up some of my monk cav. I'm going to get them out of there and retreat them across the river. Just need to keep that cavalry because if he has. The total cavalry advantage, I'm going to be in big trouble. This was a very, very interesting move by him, though. He's going to bring his great guard up pretty much right up the middle and go for my matchlock warrior monks, get them off the field. But I have my own warrior monks to reinforce, so I'm going to chase them off. And in the middle there, I used my general to kill his bow warrior monk, so now he has no ranged advantage at all. And I'm going to be able to skirmish pretty effectively with my Bow Warrior Monk. Again, I'm not sure what was happening here. I don't know if it was line of sight issue or what, but his matchlocks kept running forward and just dying without ever shooting. I don't know if that was a misclick or what happened there, but he did it multiple times and I thought it was kind of strange. And he has an unsupported Naginata Warrior Monk engaging right here. Again, I think this is a mistake. The rest of his army is just so far behind, he can't reinforce it. Obviously, I'm just going to surround this monk and get it off the field pretty quickly. And sending Great Guard in to reinforce right here would not be a good idea considering all the spears and matchlock support that I have. So he's going to lose that unit as well. And actually, he is going to reinforce with his Great Guard. Maybe I think he's going to try to get a couple rear charges off and just pull out. But one of them just... Oh, God, yeah. His Great Guard just charged into a spear wall. I think he thought that the spear roll was facing the other direction, and so he's going to run right into that and lose about 15 guys that he probably shouldn't have. But everything in this segment is completely unsupported and is going to rout. And I think he would have been much better served just waiting for the rest of his army to catch up, but he still hasn't moved yet. 
and he's finally going to start moving up and try to get an engagement off. And he knows that I have the range advantage now, so he's going to melee rush. And initially my plan was to just get rid of this little portion of units over here and then retreat across the river. I was not able to do that though because he has the farmhouse and I forgot about that. So he is going to be able to catch up to me a little bit, but I'm just going to reform and get my guys in a position to fire again. I have some really good matchlock positioning over on my left side. I have one matchlock that's set up kind of on the side across the river to get some good volleys off. And then the other matchlock unit I'm going to bring back from the sword dojo up on the top of that cliff. Bring that back and I was a little late moving that, but it, I can still get some good shots off if I get it back in time. I am going to take a cav fight here. He is running his yard cav away, and I took the opportunity to get a rear charge off. And then I'm, it's just a little bit of a feint. I'm going to lose a couple guys there, but not too many, and I'm just going to pull back out again. And as you can see, I'm just <laughs> booking it across the river, trying to get in a better position. But again, he has the farmhouse, and so he's going to be able to catch some of my units. On my right side, there's a cav fight going down. My warrior monk cav are better than his yari cav in prolonged melee, but yari cav are better off the charge, so... It's kind of a wash there. Not sure who's going to win that one, but... It's a pretty even cav fight at the moment. Spear wall with my yari shigaru up front and take the Nagnata warrior monk charge head on. And then on my left side, as you can see, I'm getting my matchlocks into some really good positions for flanking fire. And with my Naginata Warrior Monk Cav in the center there, and or my Naginata Warrior Monk Hero, and my Yari Ashigaru and Spear Wall, I should be able to hold down these units long enough for my matchlocks to get some really good flanking fire off and do some damage there. Cav fight is actually still pretty even at the moment. But he is going to get a Yari Cav free and charge into my my matchlocks in the rear. I don't really have anything to counter that at the moment besides my cavalry, which just cleaned up the right side. So I'm going to try to get those into the fight, maybe attack the general. I'm not sure where I sent those, but he is completely surrounding me in the middle. I pop hold for him with my warrior monk hero so that I can hold down that section a little bit longer. Just need them to hold out so I can get more shots off of my bow warrior monks. And the left side of this battle is actually going pretty interestingly as well. I am going to win this side because I just have such good matchlock positioning. Really good angles of fire. And a couple of Yarish Garo and Spear Wall that I should be able to clean up all this this side. In the middle here, I finally got my Warrior Monk Cav free. Got into his general, going to do some damage to them. And it's looking pretty even in the center here. But again, because I'm running the left side, I'm in pretty good shape at the moment. And just repeated hammer and anvil charges with my monk calf should be able to clean up what's left of his general. And my monk hero has only 56 kills, not too good. But they did their job, the hold firm and the morale bonus they gave my troops was a big deal. Kept my guys in the fight probably longer than they should have been considering that I was completely surrounded. And the rest of my troops are going to reinforce and I'm going to be able to clean up what he has left. His general just died, and he only has a Nodachi Samurai with in Bonsai left. So that was actually pretty interesting. I didn't do a great job kiting, and that was one thing that I think I could have done a, a better job of doing. If I had been able to pull across that river there, a, a frontal attack would have been completely suicidal, but because he had the farmhouse, he was able to catch me kind of out of position before I could get across and he did a lot of damage but it just wasn't quite enough. My spear wall and hero selection I think was a, a good choice and the hold firm just kind of held down the middle while I could win on the flanks and when I went on the flanks I just kind of collapsed in and finished him off. But I thought that was a really interesting battle. I think he played pretty well, made a couple mistakes, obviously I had a couple as well but it was pretty good. So we're going to go to the stat screen and I will see you in a bit. All right, so here we are. We deployed a pretty similar amount of guys, 1725 for me and 1665 for him. I had 1,400 kills and 1,000 losses. He had 1,400 losses and 1,000 kills. And 
I had a Naginata Warrior Monk, 265 kills. That's pretty insane, especially for classic mode. My Yarish Guard did very well. I'm telling you, give some of your guys chevrons. Your Yarish Guard chevrons in classic battles if you ever play classic mode, which you probably don't because nobody does, but <laughs> it's pretty fun. I do recommend it. Matchlocks did very well, 130 kills. And I think my uh, Monk Cab did pretty well also. Looking at his setup, he had a Warrior Monk with 150. Very good. A couple great guard, or one great guard did pretty well. The other hit a spear wall and only got 60 kills, which is not very good for a unit that costs that much. But hey, my Warrior Monk here only got 50, you know, 70. Only 70 kills and 15 losses, so yeah. But I thought that was a pretty good battle, and some of you had been asking for army compositions that were not reliant on rushing so i thought that i would change it up a little bit and i hope you enjoyed it so i will see you next time have a good day